Okay, I have started going through this uh, aviola. Uh, I've put this on the back burner. According to the schematic and the parts list, this should be a 470K or 420K. Um, uh, 470K. It's That's 220K. So that may be why this 12 SQ7 was gone, <laughs> was, was uh, bad. But uh, as you can see, the, these capacitors had been added. This was an add-on, so I cut it to get it out of the way. Now, I've taken about six or seven pictures of this chassis. Now, that's not very big area, but I took detailed photos so that I can look into it. Also, this firecracker or what have you, whatever you want to call it, and multiple. This was probably one uh, had a three gang capacitor in it originally. Now there's only two. It was sorted and just barely tacked in there, and I believe uh, so. I I pulled it out and just cut the wires and may use these leads again. Uh, my plans are to take this uh, terminal and with a little bit of creativeness these are these are uh, 20 microfarad capacitors so with a little bit of of creativeness I believe that I can mount all three of these here wire it and put that down in there and solder it back to here. That's my game plan, but I want to make sure everything here has been changed out and or checked. I've checked this resistor. I dropped it loose. It's good. This resistor is good. Um, so uh, in this area here, this capacitor, I'll probably change it before I get into to replacing all this and, and covering this corner up. That's where I'm at on this. And uh, so I'll show you what kind of creativeness I, I come up with. There was a rivet from the first um, capacitor pack, and it was soldered and pop riveted in. I had to use my little drill and get it out and also clean the solder up there. So let me show you what I came up with. Uh, I won't need a ground, so I went ahead and cut that off. This is the common one, and all of them tied to this one, and then each one of them tied to this particular one. So I'm hoping that once I get all this squared away, that that will bolt right in there and uh, won't be an issue. And uh, then I can take these wires and tie each individual capacitor where it needs to go. Okay, I've got <clears throat> all the resistors checked and changed out and uh, all the caps. Not all. These uh, micas, I'm, I've said in the past, I won't mess with them unless they're an issue. Uh, there's the filter. I have not put the fuse in yet. I just uh, clipped uh, the wiring in right now to bring it up in power and see if uh, see what uh, what the deal is. So uh, use my alligator clips to clip on. I don't have the antenna hooked up, so the uh, reception will be minimal. So let's let's see uh, what it looks like. Okay, let's. Uh, Make sure it's on. Got the isolation transformer. Got the variac minimal. We're pumping no voltage, so let's go to about 30 volts or so. Uh, the uh, less than 100 milliamps at this point in time. Let's pause this and let it sit there for a minute or so. Okay, let's go to 60 or so. Let's 
still less than 200 milliamps fading back a little bit it jumped up so we're going to condition these uh, uh, capacitors since they're new currents looking good I'm starting to see a faint glow in the dial light I don't know if you can see it or not but uh, all right let's pause this and let it set for a minute or so okay let's run it on up to about 90 and we may start hearing some sound current still looking good it's climbing a little bit wait a minute do i hear something i think i do i hear a station way down here on the band now i've got a, a wire clip to the where the antenna should go but i'm running about 220 milliamps at 90 volts all right let's let it set for a minute okay let's bring this up to 90. Oh, i'm sorry 115 or so sounds like a terrible hum going there there's 115 volts. I'm running about 280 milliamps. Hang on a second. <laughs> oh, reckon the fluorescent light had anything to do with it? All right, that, I'm not sure where that station's at. Got some noise in the tuning, apparently. I think it would... Uh, that's 570, uh, probably 30 miles away or so. You can tell the tuning needs, I need to do something with that. But we're running 280 milliamps or so, that's about right. This is my local. Let's hear the noise in the tuning. Here's the tone control. Really touchy there towards the end, but it does make a difference. And this is the uh, phono switch. All right, let's see. Oh yeah, gotta do something with that tuner. It's just too noisy. Let me work on that. But uh, I think we've got a success. Current looks good. It's playing. There is some noise in the tune. So let me let me work on that. Let's see if I can clean those slugs a little bit. Okay. The uh, Remember, it was noisy. That's the low end of the band. Right along here should be my local. I'm sorry about the light, but I uh, I cut the fluorescent off. But uh, listen to the upper end. That's where the noise was. cleaned up quite a bit let me show you what I did um, now I know I'm gonna get hammered for this because people don't like to use steel wool <laughs> around the radio and that's 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 true because the little fibers and what have you get in there but the biggest problem the coils are attached to this end and the glue had broke loose and so when I tuned this the coils were vibrating one one issue the other was the uh, shaft that the guide shaft it was rusty 
corroded, and so I took steel wool, which is not a good thing, but cleaned it off, and also I took some alcohol and cleaned the uh, cleaned the tuning rods themselves, and they look a lot better. But the biggest the biggest thing was that being loose, and that guide shaft that this this whole mechanism rides on was corroded. So I cleaned that up and uh, it a uh, lot less noise in the tuning now. So I, I think I've fixed that. So I've got to go back and mount my fuse and uh -oh. there's that same song I was playing the other night <laughs> but uh, Zager and Evans 2525 I messed that one up the last time but anyway I think it sounds pretty good uh, I'll go through the cleanup the alignment put the fuse in put a new cord on it and uh, I think we'll be good. And then let's we got to start working on that mechanism, uh, the uh, turntable part of it. Let's uh, continue taking this apart. Got the little retainer clip that held uh, this on the bottom. And uh, so hopefully I won't lose that. I'll set this aside. All right, let's see what we can. Here's the tube location. I'm not sure where this goes, but. Uh, um, it was laying on top, so it's probably on the back. We'll we'll save that. Try to locate where that might go. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's take this off. This is how it's mounted to the uh, cabinet itself. It's just a screw with uh, a washer, a lock washer and uh, a nut wood uh, just strictly on the wood no, nothing no the actual shock absorbers or the grommets are where the motor mount so we'll uh, take this Alright, got a church Christmas party or Sunday school class. It's got a Christmas party tonight. We're going to go over, probably eat too much, but have a good time. Yeah. Just got a phone call uh, not too long ago from Michael from That Tube Sound. He and I comparing notes and catching up on the phone. And uh, it's real good talking to him. He's a nice guy. I really, really like him. Enjoy his work for sure. And uh, where did my bag go? Here we go. I think just about a, all the screws and everything's here. So that's, that's good. Now this should lift out. Dustly. <laughs> and guess what? Now my screw, now my switch nit gets to come out. So that's okay. Simply brilliant. I don't have to take this off the. Uh, Should have left it loose, shouldn't I, guys? Huh? Yeah. As my daddy used to say, this one. When I get this one apart, 
and two more, that will make me three. <laughs> so I'm learning this stuff as I go. I just dropped a screw. And maybe I can find it under here. Oh, yeah. But here's the two screws. And let's see if we can get all this out. Absolutely. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put this back in. These screws in. I'm going to do it more than a thread or two so that it's going to have to really work itself out if I'm going to lose it. All right, let me move this cabinet out of the way. Uh, one of the things I did notice, this tone arm does have a, uh, a spring that I can adjust the tracking on. The uh, cartridge that uh, uh, been recommended by the Voice of Music uh, it runs about six to eight grams. And since this is not an automatic, it shouldn't be a problem, but I can adjust this, this tone arm uh, any way I want to. Let me, let me get this off, off the uh, bench and uh, we can take this apart. Okay. Let's see if I can get these out. Yeah, uh, watched several people this morning do this, and uh, this is the little bushing that keeps from compressing this so much, okay? Um, it's very similar to what goes into a radio. But this bushing goes inside and it will only, it'll go down so far and it'll keep it from compressing this and mashing it so it'll have a little bit of spring. But this is as hard as a rock here. So let's uh, go ahead and put that in the bag. And Got the grommet inside it. Make sure we don't lose that or throw that away with a rubber piece. Now that comes right off now, but I still need to take that off. Now we can take this and uh, we'll want to clean this with, uh, with some lacquer thinner and get that grease off. Let me go ahead and finish this up. Okay, there we go. That's all that part. Now this is a little different uh, pin. I've seen people take and put this in bags. and I'm just keeping my finger or my thumb on it until I get it totally off. Since it's so greasy, it's stuck, so... We don't want to lose this, so we'll put it in the bag. I'd like to find me some sort of little small plastic container. I'll tell you what would be perfect for that, and I just got this. I got some new con, uh, some new contact cleaner, and in it has contact case, and I've got half a dozen of those things just laying around, brand new, that I can probably put those small parts in. Um, let's see if you can see this. Rubber doesn't look that bad as far as cracking, but let's see if you can see. There's a, a little dent in it right there. Right there. See the dent right there? So, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty flexible, but when that turns, that table, that, uh, uh, platter is going to go blump, blump, 
blump every time that comes around so we'll have to send this off and they'll I'm sure that this I don't know who made this uh, but it's very similar to a, a uh, an RCA but uh, if you look here this is the spring and the tensioner for this this goes on and this is what keeps tension against and drives this wheel so this will have to be cleaned up this will have to be reworked and of course we'll clean clean all this up I blew blew all this stuff off with my air compressor uh, let's go ahead and get this apart a uh, little spring maybe I can get that out I want to get this plate off and take all this off so I can get this part of it clean now the motor I'm not going to use uh, a lacquer thinner or anything like that so uh, uh, I want to get it get it off and so the rest of this stuff can okay if uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and take this off so I can, I don't want to hurt that spring in any way so let's see if this will come off it does and let's see if we can get this spring to come off without damage I'm sure I can buy another spring but there's no need Okay, that's all. It just needs a good cleaning. Spring, I do not want to lose that. And that is, as you can see, it's got the long I'm trying to get that to focus there. But you can see that guess down here is where it's going to focus at but uh, let's get that I'm going to put those in a contact case but now we can take this plate off there's three nuts I couldn't find a, a wrench to fit it so, but I ended up um, an eight millimeter Well, I found the nut driver that fits it now. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's laying right here beside me. So anyway, uh, take this off. There's a star worker on it. We'll take that plate off and we'll be able to clean it a little better. And then we'll take the motor and like I say, we're not going to clean it with uh, lacquer thinner. We'll use something else. Alcohol. Not immerse it like the rest of these parts. But there's, there's that plate. We can get that cleaned up. All right. I believe that's going to be it for now. So make sure I get all these parts put back so that I don't lose them. But uh, I think this is going to wrap up this part. Uh, next time we'll, uh, we'll have this stuff cleaned up. I'll have the parts ordered. Hopefully we can get them back quick turnaround. And then we can start putting this thing back together and marry it up with the uh, amplifier and the radio. So from Larry from the Hills of Tennessee, thanks for watching, guys.